Hello, and welcome to this broadcast of Running on Love with God. My name's Lori Michelle, and I was awakened in 2009 to the voice of our creator, God himself. And he said, go get pen and paper and start writing this down. And I listened. And here I am, many years later, speaking on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and sharing his voice when we need him desperately. I'm here in Israel, and my friend Anna Marie is in Chicago. Hi, Anna Marie. And I call her the Grand Inquisitor, her new nickname, because she asks great questions that I'm sure you might have thought of yourself. She's very inquisitive and asks me very pointed questions. And one thing you should know is we do not prepare in advance for these programs. In other words, I do prepare, I look things up, but we don't speak until we record the programs and I never know really what she's going to ask. So it's impromptu and it's straight up. This program tonight is about creation versus evolution, or better said, the name of the program is, Who Wrote the Torah? And is it the truth? There's a lot of people who deny that the Bible and the stories in the Bible are truthful. And there's a lot of very smart people like Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein who deny that the version of God that's in the Torah, namely Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is a false premise and childish, really. I, I looked up Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein, and while they vary on their religious views, they're very smart, or Albert Einstein was very smart, they're geniuses, and in their ingenuity, they have ruled out the possibility of an all-knowing, all-loving God who's behind everything. And so here I am, after my awakening of 2009, sharing God's voice and explaining tonight how I know without any doubt he's not only real, but the stories in the Torah are 100% truthful. And I can explain to you in today's terms, how we experience miracles all the time and we shrug them off and we take credit for them, but it's really him. And I will explain to you tonight how he operates and how what seems like happenstance or coincidence isn't happenstance or coincidence at all. One example that I'll start with is this program I set up and often Hashem, God, tells me what I'm supposed to speak about on the next program. And he picked this topic and I posted the topic on Facebook and I sent it to you, Anna Marie. Mm -hmm. And the next day I went to the gym to work out and I look up at the TV screen as I'm working out, pumping iron, and what do I see? Inherit the wind. Look at the Hebrew subtitles. Now, if you remember this very famous movie with Spencer Tracy, it's about the scope, the scopes, 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 scopes. scopes. monkey trial, a, a true story, I believe, where yes. a teacher was arrested for teaching evolution in high school, and he was arrested. And so they put him on trial, and that's what this um, Hollywood movie was made about, the true story. And I looked up at the screen, and I laughed, and I said, wow, how convenient. How convenient that this is on TV. And I did what you and everybody else in the world does. Oh, what a great coincidence. And I'm smiling, looking at the screen and I'm thinking, oh, I'll go on YouTube and I'll watch some of it to prepare for the program. And then I took my iPhone and took a picture to send to you, Anna Marie, to say, oh, look what's on television, in the gym, in Israel, Tiberius Israel. And uh, I started laughing as I was texting you saying, he did it. 
You know, here I am, I speak to him, I have visions, I talk to him daily, and I did what every person on earth does. Mm -hmm. How convenient. It was him. He picked the program. He knew what was going to be on the TV screen. He gave me all the ammunition to talk about evolution, versus creation and when i watched i went on youtube and watched this clip that you see here and i'll just say and i don't want to go on too long that the hollywood producers that produced that movie anna marie made the man the bible fundamentalist look like bozo the clown they literally put a bald, a fake bald head. I don't know if you can see. Whoa. It, it's pretty obvious in the movie. It's a really bad bald wig. It's really bad and lots of hair. And, you know, I'm a baby boomer, so I remember Bozo the Clown. Maybe young people do. don't know who Bozo the Clown is, but he had a bald head and big bushy hair. So, and then he's sweating. And as Spencer Tracy is interrogating him, about evolution and don't men have the right to think and how do you how could you possibly believe that the world was created in six days when there's irrefutable proof that there are fossils or there is rocks that are millions of years old and it's hot in the in the movie and he's sweating so he's not only looking like a clown but he's sweating under the pressure and they made him look like a buffoon because he believes in the authenticity of Genesis. So here I am in 2017 telling you God's real. Genesis is the real deal. And he is behind everything, whether you believe it or know it or not. Now I'll turn the floor over. The first thing I want to say is one time when you and I were talking about Genesis, and the creation in six days. I said something to you about, Lori, really six days? And what you replied was, what is a day to God? Right. That, that was perfect. So do you want to go on a little bit about that? Well, I don't remember answering that way, but that's the truth. And even in this movie, Spencer Tracy gave that argument to the Bible-toting fundamentalist on the witness stand. Spencer Tracy actually made the argument for six days of creation by God. He said those words, what you just said, that I had responded to you. So that's the truth. Hashem explains that six days is not necessarily six 24-hour days. He just said they're not. It's not. And what we're counting from the beginning of creation when we celebrate the Jewish calendar is the beginning of mankind. Well, they, they, we talk about the six days, but it's the anniversary of the creation of humankind being brought into existence. So again, it's not 6,000 literal years. Well, it's... Um, not for all of creation. The earth itself is many millions of years old. And the universe is older than that. But How mankind, can... people, people, Adam, Eve, is 5,778 years old. He just said yes. But again, not our years, because there are human fossils that go further, way further back than that. But not human fossils, human beings. All right. Well, I well, well, well then you can, I, I'm, I'm not a scientist or a physicist, physicist, but what I will tell you is I speak to him. And I believe much of what he says. He doesn't always tell me the truth. I will tell you that. And you know that. He'll tell me something's going to happen and it's going to be good and it's not. 
And the reason he does that is because he needs me to do something that I wouldn't want to do. And he forces me to do it. So I'm not a scientist. And I know there are fossils that are, they look like Neanderthal men, and maybe they're um, physically, physicists have determined they're older than 5,778 years old. I don't know, but I, I trust that he's real and that the Torah is real. And beyond that, I, I can't explain any more than that. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a mom who uh, had my own marketing company and he woke me up and I talked to him day and night and I, I can explain how he operates where it looks like things are happenstance and they're simply not. He's real and he's behind it all. How can we reconcile scientific discoveries with biblical stories, or should we not even try? Uh, ex give me an example. Well, what we were just talking about, the fossil record being different from what it says literally in the Bible. There are remains that are purposeful, that lend themselves, he's talking right now, for scientists to deduce and come to the conclusion there's no such thing as God on purpose. We're here to choose. We are here, we are souls with our conscious minds erased. The, the most forward part of our minds. Our minds are not our brain. Our minds are a soul mind, they're energy. The brain, the physical brain, may store memories and, and it's a traffic cop for all of our impulses and nerves, but it's not who we are. I call it the gavilta fish between our ears. It's our physiology. But there's another part of us that is more truthful to who we are, and that's our soul. And when we come incarnate, and we are placed in a vessel, which is our body, and become one with our body, our memory is erased of where we came from and why we're here. And it's all a test. So people like Stephen Hawking, who has brilliant as he is, he's very book smart and he's a genius, he's got it wrong. He's not right. Who wrote the Torah? Hashem, God. It's his Torah and his, his user's manual, playbook, if you will, for how we're supposed to live a blessed life. It has his rules, it has many stories, and it has many explanations. And it's a, it's a document that was accompanied by an oral tradition teaching that Moshe taught the Jewish, the, well, they were the Israelites, the tribes of Israel. He taught them for 40 years in the desert. So it's not just the Torah that was given to Moshe, but it was volumes and volumes of oral tradition and teachings that accompanied the Torah explanations. In other and words, that, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was not meant to be taken literally, although in some cultures, that's what they do. There's explanations and there's oral tradition and Torah law that was given verbally. And then people wrote it down? Well, they wrote the oral tradition down many, many years later at the beginning of or right after the diaspora, which is when the Jewish children were scattered all over the earth and they were concerned that rabbis in their wisdom were worried that the knowledge that they had 
when they were together in Israel would be lost. So they wrote it down and it's called the Talmud, the Gemara, the oral tradition, the written oral Torah. How much has been lost in language or cultural translation between what was written down back then and between what we can read now? Not much, he just said. It depends on the culture and the group of people that you learn from. The world has lost much. The world is, the world is virtually clueless. <laughs> There's a very small group of people who held this information tightly and learn and study day and night. You could study about Hashem and God and his ways day and night and never, and never scratch the surface. But there are people who hold this information very tightly. Why is God so concealed in this world? He hasn't always been concealed, this, this concealed, and he's really not as concealed as you might believe he is. There are many miracles that we no longer consider miracles because we believe we're God. <laughs> there is a whole philosophy that God is an energy that we're all part of. That was one of, I looked up Albert Einstein, and he believed in some form of, they call it a pantheistic God, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Okay. I, I hadn't heard of it. I read a little bit about it before we spoke tonight. And he considered himself agnostic. And when asked if he believed in an afterlife, Einstein replied, no, and one life is enough for me. Well, much to Albert Einstein's dismay, when he died, he found out what a lot of people do when they die. And there are people who have died and returned to talk about it. And I've sent you videos of a young boy in Israel, 15 years old, who died for quite a while and returned. And there is a consistent explanation of what happens when you leave your vessel, you leave your body, and where you go. And they're not inventing it. It's not fiction. And according to Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein, it's childish to believe in a personal God with human-like attributes. It's not childish. In fact, the opposite is true. Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein were the height of narcissists or narcissism to believe that there's no such thing as a creator, to believe that you can explain away everything that there is and that we are God. We're all part of God's energy. Well, Stephen Hawking in uh, 2014 was interviewed and said he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. But just recently, a few days ago, he came out with um, a warning, a stark warning. He's in a panic. Well, I don't know why he's panicking. He's panicking because he's worried that artificial intelligence will one day take over for mankind and sex robots will start to multiply and there will be and humankind will be extinct. Which I found this was just in the news a few days ago. So I said to Hashem, well, why is he in a panic? What does he care? Evolution. You know? BFD, sorry. <laughs> Who cares? It's just another evolution, you know? It was Neanderthal men and monkeys. Then there was men. And he doesn't believe in an afterlife. So, que sera, sera. Now we'll have sex robots. Big deal. Sorry to be so blunt, but that kind of arrogance makes me very angry because I know firsthand, face to face, I listen to him, 
I literally can see a spiritual image of him and he is like us, but he is not us. He's God and he's very personal and he's very attentive and he's aware of everything and every person. He's very aware of you. He's very aware of me. And I can give you personal examples of how I know this. Okay, do it. Do it. Okay. Well, this morning, in preparation for this program, I'll give you my own personal example. I woke up this morning and we were talking. We talk every morning. I wake up. Good morning. Good morning. And he shows me images and then has a conversation. We were talking about something and I don't even remember. And suddenly, he put this in my mind right here. This is a yard site light, a lamp, a candle. It's a memorial candle and Jewish people, when we have someone we love that passes away, on the Jewish anniversary, on the Hebrew calendar, every year we light a candle in memorial of this person. And there are three people every year I light a candle for, my father, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law. And I have, and it, the Hebrew calendar does not go by the Gregorian calendar and the date that you light your candle is different every year because it's not the same date that they died. So it's November and he showed this to me and I said, oh, I said, it's a yard site lamp. He said, yes. I said, do you want to talk about death in general, or do you want to talk about somebody's yard site? He said, one person's yard site. I said, one person. I said, do I know who it is? He said, yes. Who died around this time? And then I realized it was my mother-in-law. And I thought, oh, uh, it's not on my calendar. I have a calendar and a reminder. And for some reason, my calendar on my iPhone was wiped clean. I didn't get any reminders. And her yard site, the lighting, is on November 16th. 10 days ten day yeah. from now? 11? 11. He was, he was reminding me. The chances are very good that it might have come and gone and I wouldn't have lit the candle. Well, I had no more reminders. I have no one from America that would remind me or send me a reminder. And that, he did it for two reasons. He did, of course, to remind me because I would have been so upset if I didn't light a, a candle for her. I loved my mother-in-law. But he did it in preparation for this program. This is how he operates. Now, if I wasn't awake and I wasn't speaking with him in back and forth English dialogue, I would have dreamed about the yard site light and I would have woken up and I'm like, no, oh, yard site. And I might have come up with the answer, right? And I would have shrugged it off and said, oh, I dreamt about it. She was on my mind. I'd have a million reasons to explain away what God gave to me, he gave it to me. We talk back and forth. This isn't a chemical something in my brain. <laughs> this is a conversation, a fluent conversation every day that I have with him. So are you saying anytime we suddenly remember something that that's actually an image from God that we're receiving? Or do we sometimes just randomly suddenly remember things? He says to me, the only one that puts dreams and visions into our minds is him. But we're surrounded by love, by spirit. Parents that passed away. So, but they don't know our secret thoughts. Only Hashem does. So sometimes you'll be in a car driving and suddenly you get this urge, step on the brake and you stop short. You don't even know why you're doing it. 
You just have to step on the brake. And you stop in a nick of time and an ambulance comes by and you would have been dead. That spirit world, it could be God or it could be others screaming at you, stop now. And you jam on your brakes and they save your life. Okay, so we're surrounded in spirit. But there are other situations where he gives us the answer. Music. He, there are many people who write and produce and compose music. And he will give you songs. And he gives you assistance. Spirit world will also intervene. But technology, here, I printed this out. Now, on my program that I posted... I posted a picture that said, you see it? Yes. You want to read it? Can you read it? No, it's too far away for me to it's read. It's too wet. Okay, I'll read but it. I, I can kind of remember what it said. It said okay. something like 6,000 pounds of steel flying through the air. His miracle through man. Yes. So, so airplanes were prophesized in the Torah. They didn't, the, the prophets didn't know what they were looking at, but they described what is the modern day airplane. Okay, but Stephen Hawking or Albert Einstein would say, we created it, we did that. So I'm going to show you another picture, and I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember this? Oh, I think, yes, I do, I do. This was called... Miracle on the Hudson. Yes. And a pilot lost control of the airplane, was over the Hudson River in New York, and literally landed the plane on the Hudson River as though it was solid. The pilot, and, and everybody got out, and this is the picture of everybody standing on the wings. Right. Now, someone will say, oh, lucky break. The pilot who flew that plane, they said, had the perfect experience, the perfect record. I, I read about him. I don't have all the details about his background. But if anyone in the entire world would be able to pull this off, it was that pilot who was flying that plane at that moment. That's, that's Hashem. It's not accidental. It's on purpose. He told me to, um, this morning also, oh, we have two minutes left. I am almost completely deaf. I have a cochlear implant, a miracle in technology. And whoever came up with the cochlear implant I'm so smart, look what I did. There are companies who manufacture it and they're so smart. But in 1959, when I was born, there was no such thing as a cochlear implant. There was no such thing as texting. There was no such thing as YouTube. There was no such thing as personal computers. If today was like 1959, I wouldn't be able to speak to you. I would have gone deaf. I would have lost everything. I wouldn't have people in my life. I would have learned how to sign. I would have had to walk away from our relationship because you could no longer speak to me. None of this is an accident. I was awakened in 2009 to the voice of God himself. And I have texting and YouTube and video chat and all this technology and the miracle of a cochlear implant that wasn't around the day I was born. Is it an accident? I'm telling you, no, there is no accident. There, is, there are no accidents. He speaks to us. He speaks through us. He works through us. This would not happen without his say-so and his involvement. He's involved in everything. And just as he flashed this in my mind's eye and had a conversation 
to remind me to light a memorial light for my mother-in-law. He does this to us, to all of us, all the time. And while Stephen Hawking thinks that he's brilliant and he does it all on his own, we do nothing on our own. He's involved in every moment of our lives and he's pure love. And yeah, Albert Einstein had it wrong also. He loves, he feels, he has anger. He's human-like, but he's not human at all. He is our creator and the master of everything that there is. And we need to thank him and appreciate him in every moment. I hope you enjoyed this program. Go to lauriemichelle.net, contact me. I'll share more stories. I have daily stories to share with you about how real he is. It's very inspiring to know that we're loved and we're looked after and everything is on purpose. And this, YouTube, video chat, text messages, all of it is for this time to come together and learn how to get it right and bring world peace in our time. God bless you. May there be peace in our world in our time. God bless you.